Uh, so far, we have looked at uh, mobility of an isolated ion in an applied electric field. So, what we will do now is we will extend this concept to uh, understand what is the mobility of isolated colloidal particle in a um, uh, electric field. Uh, so, uh, mobility of the isolated ion is given by <coughs> u uh, uh, which is uh, the velocity with which the ion is moving per unit field. Uh, it depends on the charge <coughs> of the uh, I isolated ion, eta is the viscosity of the fluid and R s is the dimension of the isolated ion that we are considering. Um, if we want to estimate uh, uh, Q from this expression that is the charge of the isolated ion uh, which you can relate again to uh, zeta potential of a uh, in the case of a, a, colo a charged colloidal particle, uh, what we should uh, know is we should know what is the velocity. But however, because the uh, ions are very very small in uh, dimension, uh, we cannot be measured. Uh, 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 therefore, what one uh, you does is you can actually measure the conductance, which is the reciprocal of uh, um, the, the resistance. And uh, and if you know if you know the conductance and the from and the Faraday constant, you can actually calculate what is u. Um, therefore. Uh, from uh, the calculated value of u, I can actually calculate what is the, the charge of the uh, isolated ion that is under consideration. Um, so, we can extend the same concept uh, to um, uh, uh, essentially obtain the mobility of an isolated particle in an applied electric field. Uh, however, uh, by treating that the ch charged collided particles are what are called as larger ions or the the macro ions okay instead of uh, so if you look if you look at uh, uh, isolated ion so you could have uh, uh, ions of different valency uh, they, they could, you could have z times e where z is the valency of the ions uh, multiplied by the charge of the electron is what gives the the total charge of the isolated ion uh, however so we know that z is equal to uh, plus 1 or plus 2 or plus 3 depending upon uh, whether we are considering a monovalent, divalent or trivalent ions. Uh, uh, however, so if um, uh, we can assume that when you have a, a charged particle that is which has a large number of surface groups on the on the uh, uh, on the surface of the particle. So, you can say that uh, we can still say that q is z times e. However, we do not know what is z because it depends on the uh, the total number of uh, dissociable groups on the surface or the total number of adsorbed ions on the, the surface of the particle. Um, uh, so, however, uh, when one is uh, dealing with the mobility of uh, isolated particles, the studying mobility of colloids is much much simpler than uh, small uh, ions because the velocity with which the particles are moving in a given f in, in uh, under the influence of a given uh, external field can be experimentally measured uh, by a direct visualization. So, what I can do is you could have you know uh, um, uh, two electrode I can uh, there could be particles you know in a fluid uh, and I can look at uh, a video of the migration of particles. Then uh, you could uh, track these particles in different frames. For example, if this is at time t t one, uh, these are the position of the particle. I can say that uh, this would have moved some further location um, uh, under the influence of the uh, field. So therefore, I can calculate what is the the displacement of the particle. And if I know what is the displacement and the time that the particle has taken for the movement, I can actually calculate uh, velocity directly from. Uh, simple experiments. Okay, this can be either done by using microscope or one could use um, light scattering techniques to detect the position of the particle. So, therefore, once the velocity and the field that is responsible for the the motion of the particles are known, one could actually calculate what is the the mobility uh, directly from uh, experiments. Therefore, studying electrophoretic mobility of uh, particles is much much simpler than studying the mobility of ions because we have a chance of directly visualizing the motion of the particle in the presence of an electric field. Uh, uh, so, for colloidal particles the mobility is known as what is called as a electrophoretic mobility and 
the phenomena that is associated with this is what is called a electrophoresis and one often combines uh, a microscopy experiment with electrophoresis therefore the technique by which um, the mobility can be measured when the when an isolated collateral particle moves in a field is uh, what is called as a, a micro electrophoresis so now if you want to calculate um, so so while you can be readily measured for colloids by doing simple experiments as we discussed uh, its interpretation is a uh, little bit more um, difficult than for simpler ions because once you calculate q for an isolated ion we know that you know it could the charge could be either e or 2 times e or 3 times e depending upon what kind of ion one is dealing with however uh, the charge carried by colloidal particles is not a known quantity therefore and of course it could vary depending upon the the number of charges on the surface uh, and um, uh, and other factors such as presence of electrolyte in the solution uh, right so therefore uh, and moreover if you want to estimate what is q that is the the charge of the the charge carried by the colloidal particle uh, in this expression r s is again an unknown quantity because uh, r s which is the the size of the colloidal particle or the radius of the colloidal particle that is uh, being investigated is an unknown quantity so therefore what one could do is instead of um, uh, having an unknown quantity you could use stokes einstein relation and substitute for rs that is the the radius of the uh, particle under consideration in this case we are specifically considering a, a spherical particle because the stokes einstein equation that has been written up here is valid for uh, a spherical particle moving in a fluid <coughs> so therefore u which is q divided by 6 pi eta into rs instead of uh, rs so we what we'll do is we'll substitute uh, kbt divided by 6 pi eta into d therefore so we have uh, 6 pi eta and 6 pi eta get cancelled therefore uh, the electrophoretic mobility goes as q times d divided by kbt where d is the the diffusivity of the the particle so therefore um, a combination of diffusion experiments which will help us to find what is the the diffusion coefficient of the particle and if we combine that with electrophoresis experiment which give us what is the the value of the electrophoretic mobility therefore a combination of these two experiments are necessary to evaluate the charge of the colloidal particle um, and of course the equation that has been developed here it is valid for situations when the charged particle is considered in isolation from other ions okay which is which uh, of course uh, which is not the uh, tr uh, true case because we know that there are going to be uh, counter ions and uh, there's going to be an electrical double layer as well right so all these are going to complicate you know uh, um, uh, the issues however uh, this expression can be uh, used when we assume that the charged particle under consideration is in isolation compared to other ions which is an assumption in developing this expression and and because of the fact that the charged particles uh, would always have an electrical double layer uh, therefore the migrating unit uh, that uh, in the electric field is not only the the particle plus the associated electro electrical double layer along with the particle is what is a migrating unit therefore one has to uh, exercise caution when one is using these expressions um, uh, so now that we have uh, know about the mobility of uh, the isolated ions and the electrophoretic mobility of charged particle what we will do is we will develop uh, expressions for relating electrophoretic mobility to the the zeta potential um, and uh, uh, so for that what we will do is we will uh, go back and look at uh, module um, 4 in which we looked at uh, uh, potential distribution around charge surfaces and because we are dealing with uh, mobility of a charge particle of radius r s we will consider a case where there is a, a spherical particle of radius r and that is being 
set into motion because of the applied electric field. Um, therefore, uh, what we will do is uh, we will uh, consider uh, a case where we would like to obtain the potential distribution around a, a spherical surface. Um, how does the potential uh, psi varies with distance r from the, the surface of the, the spherical particle. Uh, and in specific we will consider the d by Huckel approximation which is valid for the low potential cases. The starting point that we had considered is it is a, a linearized Poisson Boltzmann equation which is 1 over r square into d by dr of r square d psi by dr is equal to um, uh, e square divided by epsilon k b t uh, sigma i n i infinity z i square times psi this is uh, kappa square. right? So, uh, in order to solve this equation which is uh, the one dimensional uh, Poisson Boltzmann linearized Poisson Boltzmann equation uh, in the, the spherical coordinates we will introduce a variable x such that x is equal to r times psi. Therefore, I can uh, rearrange this expression as d by dr of r square into d psi by dr is equal to um, instead of um, this term uh, there is psi here right instead of uh, uh, so what we will do is I have I have taken there was 1 over r square here I have taken r to the, the right hand side therefore I have r square into kappa square in, in the right hand side times d psi. Okay, I can uh, uh, write this as uh, d by dr of r square into d psi by dr uh, because we have introduced uh, x is equal to r times psi. Therefore, what I can do is um, we will rearrange this. I can write this as r times uh, kappa square times r times psi. Right? That is what I have here. So, this term I can write this as r times kappa square into r times psi. Therefore, I have r times kappa square times instead of r times psi I have replaced it with uh, x because we have used a, a new variable x. Um, but if you look at the left hand side d by dr of uh, r square into d psi by dr I can write this as d by dr of r square into d by dr of x divided by r because I am going to replace instead of psi I have x divided by r now. So, therefore, uh, if I differentiate the term in the bracket so I, I uh, what I what I will uh, what I will get is d by dr is equal to r square into uh, d by dr of x by r this term uh, essentially is 1 over r dx by dr minus x divided by r square. So, uh, so therefore, uh, the left hand side term that is d by dr of r square d psi by dr uh, can be written as d by dr of r square into 1 over r dx by dr minus x by r square. I can take r square in the uh, uh, inside the bracket. So, therefore, uh, this essentially becomes uh, d by dr of uh, there is 1 and on 1 r and 1 r gets cancelled therefore, I have only 1 r there minus uh, times d x by d r minus x therefore, d by d r of uh, r square d psi by d r essentially becomes um, d by d r of r d x by d r minus x uh, which is equal to uh, r into uh, d d square x by um, uh, d r. Right. So, um, so therefore, uh, what we have done is we have been able to um, uh, uh, the left hand side has been simplified to r into d square x by d r square that is what we have done here right and the right hand side is kappa square into x where x is r times psi and uh, 
the general solution of an equation of this sort is given by x is equal to a times uh, exp uh, uh, exponent minus kappa r plus b times exponent kappa r. Uh, we can substitute back for um, the the value of um, r here. So therefore, uh, instead of um, so because we have x here, so I can replace this with uh, x is uh, r times psi, and I can take r onto the the right hand side. Essentially, I end up with psi is equal to a uh, by r times exponent of minus k times r plus b by r exponent of um, k r. Um, of course, we can invoke the condition that um, the potential psi uh, should go to zero when x tends to infinity, right? Because if you have any charged surface, uh, whether it's, it is positively charged or negatively charged, we know that if you go to a, a distance sufficiently far away from the the surface of the particle, um, so uh, essentially the total potential at a very large um, uh, distance is going to be uh, zero because of the fact that uh, the total number of uh, um, uh, positive uh, uh, coions and counterions of the solution is going to be uh, essentially same. Therefore, um, it turns out that this is true only when b is going to be zero. Therefore, the condition that psi tends to zero as x tends to uh, infinity gives us a condition that uh, b is equal to zero. That is one of the uh, integration constant can be um, um, uh, left out. Therefore, psi essentially becomes a times exponent of minus k times r divided by r. Now, if we consider the limit of uh, infinite dilution, that means we have added a really large number of salt. Okay, in such a case, we know that a potential uh, psi, so electric field E electric field E is minus d psi by uh, electric field E is q times q times E is force right and uh, therefore and because of the fact that um, uh, E goes as um, minus uh, d psi by dx, uh, d psi by dr in this case, uh, we know that the potential should be 1 over 4 pi epsilon into uh, q divided by r. This comes from the uh, uh, basic physics. So, therefore, uh, as k tends to 0, uh, that is uh, infinite dilution case, uh, equation 1 that we have developed okay, and uh, this expression should um, converge okay and that can only happen if a takes a, a value of q divided by 4 pi epsilon therefore the expression for the the potential uh, essentially goes as um, uh, psi is equal to 1 over 4 pi uh, epsilon into q by r that is the the constant that is derived right that's the the constant that is a right so therefore uh, psi goes as q divided by 4 pi epsilon into 1 over r exponent of minus uh, kappa times r okay so therefore um, and we know that uh, uh, zeta potential is uh, defined as the the potential at the the plane of shear therefore uh, uh, the the potential psi uh, tends to zeta when r goes to r s where r s is the the radius of the spherical particle that we are considering. So, therefore, I can use this condition and write this expression as zeta is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon q uh, uh, divided by instead of r I have r s here exponent of minus kappa times um, r s. Okay. Now, if we invoke the condition of small uh, k times r s, we will uh, uh, talk a little bit about what this condition essentially means. Um, uh, uh, zeta uh, goes as 1 over 4 pi epsilon q 
divided by R s. So, I can take this to the, the denominator, I can write it as 1 over exponent uh, kappa times R s. So, therefore, um, and I can use a, a series expansion for exponent k times R s. So, I can write it as 1 plus k times R s plus uh, k uh, kappa square R s square divided by 2 factorial and, and, and higher order terms. And because we are considering a case of small k times R s, we can neglect the higher order terms. Therefore, zeta becomes 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon into q divided by R s uh, times 1 divided by 1 plus k times R s. And because k times R s is small, I can write zeta as q divided by 4 pi epsilon into R s. Okay? Uh, so, therefore, for small uh, k times R s, uh, by uh, using uh, linearized uh, Poisson Boltzmann equation for uh, the spherical uh, si uh, spherical particle system, we have been able to show that the zeta potential uh, is given by 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon into q divided by R s. Uh, however, we have for the case of an isolated particle uh, moving in a um, electric field, we have derived that u goes as q divided by 6 pi eta into uh, r s. So, um, I can uh, replace for q from this expression, right. So, I have uh, q, I can write q as um, zeta times 4 pi epsilon into r s that comes from this expression divided by 6 pi eta into r s. So, this this gets cancelled. So, I have pi and pi also gets cancelled and therefore, you end up with 2 by 3 factor multiplied by zeta epsilon divided by n, okay, which is what is called as a Huckel equation, which is valid when uh, uh, k times r s is small, more specifically when k times r s is uh, less than 0.1. Okay. So, the case that we have considered here is uh, valid for uh, a situation which is what is called as a, a thick double layer because of the fact that you know the k times r s um, this expression is valid for k times r s is less than 0 0.1. I can rearrange this and I can write this as r s divided by k inverse where k inverse is the thickness of the electrical double layer. Therefore, uh, this condition is met when k inverse that is the thickness of the double layer is much much larger compared to the dimension of the particle. So, therefore, this Huckel equation can be used to obtain a zeta potential from the mobility measurements when uh, we consider a case where uh, the electrical double layer is thick uh, that will occur when uh, the concentration of electrolyte in the system is uh, very, very low th that is in the case of uh, uh, dilute electrolyte um, uh, conditions. Uh, now, we would like to look at uh, a case where uh, the other limit uh, that is when uh, k inverse that is the, the thickness of the double layer is very, very small uh, that is uh, uh, that will occur when, uh, when this k times uh, kappa inverse is very, very small. So, this uh, kappa times r s would be very, very large that is uh, larger than about uh, 100. Okay, so, for this what we are going to do is, uh, uh, so we will consider a, a situation where the, the thickness of the electrical double layer is negligible compared to the radius of curvature r of the um, uh, particle or any surface that we are considering. And uh, the, the, so, uh, essentially we are considering the thin electrical double layer um, limit. Uh, so, this derivation that we are going to do, it is applicable for any geometry as long as the radius of the curvature is large compared to uh, kappa inverse, which uh, this condition is of course, met when we consider flat pla place for which the radius of curvature is infinity. right? So, therefore, that is very, very large compared to kappa inverse. And uh, so, this uh, uh, k times r s being large uh, uh, is met when the concentration of electrolyte is relatively high. That means, we have added a very large concentration of electrolyte into the solution. So, that 
the electrical double layer is compressed that means, the dimension of the electrical double layer is very very small or for case where r that is the r s that is the radius of the particle is much much larger compared to uh, much much larger that will uh, of course, occur if you consider flat particles or when you have cases where the uh, we are considering uh, uh, slightly curved surfaces. <coughs> so, therefore, both these conditions lead to uh, k times r s uh, being very very large. Um, so, so whenever a, a, a colloidal particle is set into motion uh, in the presence of an, an electric field, uh, the fluid um, element around the particle is also going to uh, move. So, therefore, what we are going to do is to consider uh, a fluid element which is in the immediate vicinity of the uh, charge surface. Uh, and we are going to do a, a force balance that we did uh, when we looked at uh, uh, motion of uh, 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 particle in the fluid. Okay. So, for that what we will do is we will consider a, a volume element of area A and the thickness of the volume element is um, d x that is what is represented here that is the, uh, the thickness of the um, volume element and the area is given by A and there is an electric field and that is applied and because of the electric field that is applied the particle is going to move in a particular direction and it is going to drag the fluid uh, in the immediate vicinity also along with it. Okay. So, what, what we could do is we could write uh, an expression for the viscous force that is acting on the uh, on the face nearest to the, the surface of the particle. So, if you consider that uh, the particle is here. Right. So, we can say that at distance x okay, uh, the viscous force that is acting on the, the fluid element that we are considering is given by eta times a by uh, d v by d x uh, that comes from the, the Newton's law of viscosity. And at a distance uh, x plus uh, d x um, the force exerted is given by f is equal to eta times a uh, d v uh, x uh, at uh, x plus uh, d x. Uh, therefore, the net force that is acting on the volume element is given by uh, which is f viscous is f at x plus d x minus f at x. Therefore, f viscous becomes eta times a uh, d square v by d x square into d x. This essentially comes from the, the definition of the uh, double derivative. right? And however, we know that uh, although the, the particle will accelerate initially, uh, at some time there is going to be a, a stationary state or a steady state that is going to be uh, achieved and uh, that occurs because there is an equal and opposite force that is also exerted on the, the volume element and considering that the volume element in the immediate vicinity of uh, the charged particle will have uh, uh, ions in the volume element that means, uh, we are going to have co ions and counter ions present in this volume element. So, there is going to be an electrical force that will come into picture which is given by q times e. Now, in this case uh, in the earlier case we looked at q is the, the charge of the particle. However, when we are considering a volume element we are going to write q as the uh, charge density that is rho star which is the total charge. Uh, per unit volume that multiplied by the volume of the fluid element that we are considered that will give me what is the total that is a, that, that gives me the charge contribution and that times the applied electric field is what gives f e l. Okay. So, so, however, we know that rho star that is the charge density uh, it is um, uh, I can invoke uh, the Poisson um, equation uh, again for the variation of potential in one direction and the velocity with which the particle that we are uh, th that is uh, uh, is uh, the fluid element that we are considering. So, we are looking at uh, a plane which is perpendicular to the, the surface of the particle. Therefore, the moment of the particle is only in 
x direction that is perpendicular to the, the surface. Okay. So, therefore, uh, because of the I can uh, use the Poisson equation and write f e l as uh, there is a times uh, d x that is the volume that we had here and instead of rho star I am going to substitute this with e times d square psi by d x square of course, there is going to be a, a negative sign. Okay. So, the this particular equation that we have written up this equation applies to the region very next to the charge surface because we know that if you go to uh, sufficiently far away distance the uh, potential is going to become 0 therefore, this force is not going to be uh, existent at all. Okay. So, therefore, um, f electrical is equal to minus a times epsilon uh, e uh, d square psi by d x square times d x is applicable to a fluid element which is in the uh, immediate vicinity of the um, charge surface. So, therefore, uh, we will again uh, go back to the force balance. So, we had written that f viscous should be equal to f electrical uh, when the stationary state is reached. So, that is the expression for the, the viscous force that we have developed and that is the expression for the electrical force. So, the a on both sides gets cancelled. I can write this as uh, d by d x of eta times dv by d x times d x is equal to minus e times d by d x of uh, epsilon times d psi by d x. Uh, if I integrate this, so I will get this term is equal to this term plus an integration uh, constant and uh, uh, because of the fact that the if you look at a fluid element that is at a, a very large distance from the, the charge surface the velocity is going to be 0 right uh, because the only the fluid that is in the immediate vicinity of the particle moves along with the particle. So, therefore, uh, v is equal to 0 uh, that uh, therefore, d v by d x is equal to 0 and and of course, uh, the potential is also there uh, is 0 therefore, d psi by d x is also equal to 0. Therefore, um, we can uh, invoke these conditions uh, and set c 1 is equal to uh, uh, um, uh, 0. Right? So, now that the force balance is given as this expression. So, I can integrate uh, this expression further uh, integration integrating d v uh, uh, eta times integration of uh, d v is equal to minus e times um, epsilon integration of d psi. Uh, if you look at the limits here, so we have used the limits for velocity from v to uh, 0 and when the so, when uh, uh, so if you if you look at so the v is the the velocity with which the particle is um, moving uh, and uh, therefore, the velocity with which the fluid is also moving uh, is is also the same um, and if I substitute these integration limits uh, eta times v uh, becomes minus uh, e times uh, psi. Uh, times uh, uh, zeta. Uh, therefore, uh, the electrophoretic mobility u which is given as v divided by um, uh, the strength of the applied electric field uh, is equal to uh, epsilon times zeta divided by eta. So, this expression is what is called as a Helmholtz the smaller choksi equation for the, the mobility. Okay. Um, we will just look at these limits. right? So, we know that um, so, uh, when so when the when the, the so if if we assume that this is the the fluid element that is very next to the the particle surface, we know that when um, uh, at the the surface of the uh, at the surface of the the particle, uh, the velocity of the fluid and the velocity of the particle have to be same and that is the velocity v with which the particles are moving at that location the potential is given by zeta and however, if you look at a, a very far away distance from the, the surface uh, that is when um, the velocity becomes 0 uh, that is 
the, the potential is also uh, 0 right. Therefore, we have used the condition that when velocity uh, is okay, we have used a condition that when the velocity is v the potential is going to be zeta and then when the velocity is 0 the potential essentially is uh, 0 right. So, therefore, uh, the, the electrophoretic mobility uh, which is uh, v by um, e uh, goes as epsilon times zeta divided by uh, eta for the case of um, uh, thin double layers. So, therefore, we can both the, uh, so we have developed uh, two expressions one uh, which is valid for um, kappa times r s less than um, 0 0.1 other for kappa times r s greater than 100. So, you can write uh, uh, the expression for the uh, uh, relation between uh, u and uh, zeta in a as a single expression where u is given by uh, c times um, uh, epsilon times zeta divided by eta and uh, uh, the constant c uh, takes the value 2 by 3 when um, kappa times r s is less than 0.1 and the constant c takes a value of 1 when the kappa times uh, r uh, r is r s is greater than uh, 100 ok. So, the so that, that that is so this is the the case of thick double layers and this is the case of uh, thin double layers and uh, the fact that uh, the coefficient is 2 by 3 in this case and 1 in this case uh, you, you can you can say that the mobility uh, in the um, thick double layer case is uh, smaller than the mobility in the case of uh, uh, thin uh, double layer uh, and uh, and that makes sense uh, because of the fact that whenever you have uh, a thick double layer there is going to be an additional drag that will come into picture because of the, the electrical double layer a thick electrical double layer around the charged particle and that is uh, going to slow down the, the motion of the particle. Therefore, the mobility that is measured is smaller than the case when when uh, the mobility is going to be uh, um, measured when uh, the kappa inverse is very very small that is the case of uh, very thin um, uh, double layers.